Hey everyone, welcome to another one of our videos in our React Native series. So Charlie and I have been talking a lot about like just different things you could do with React Native. We've talked about the payment sheet. We've talked about Link. We've talked about tons of amazing features that are available in there. But Charlie has some more stuff he wants to talk to us about today. So, so Charlie, why don't you tell us what do you, uh, what do you have for us? Yeah, so we actually just released a new set of APIs um, called the Platform Pay API. And basically, this is just a streamlined experience for adding Apple Pay or Google Pay to your app um, outside of the payment sheet. So we, we've talked about the payment sheet a lot, and that's like an, a, a Stripe kind of hosted sheet in your app for payments. Um, but let's say you want uh, just a streamlined specific uh, Apple Pay or Google Pay experience. So these would be the APIs that you use in that situation. Got it. So then I can think about, hey, those instances where I want to write my React Native app, but I want to, like you said, make use of, you know, Apple Pay if I'm on an Apple device, Google Pay if I'm on a Google device. And I want to be able to, you know, turn on my NFC thing and, and tap it and then just be able to receive it, right? So mm -hmm. you're saying look, now I could be able to use API specific inside of that React Native application that allow me to do that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And these APIs are also kind of platform agnostic. So when you're writing the actual React Native app, you're not writing like one Google Pay screen and one Apple Pay screen, and then writing some like, if platform is iOS, render this, if platform is Android, render this. Because mm -hmm. um, that's obviously, it kind of defeats the purpose of React Native if you're writing in a cross-platform framework, but then writing once per platform. Um, so instead with these APIs, you just kind of treat it all like the same thing. You'll pass some different configuration here and there, but um, besides like some JSON, it's it's completely platform agnostic. Okay. Now this question might be a little bit out of scope, and let me know if it is. But a lot of the times when I see folks using some of those types of payment methods, again, like we're talking about Apple Pay and Google Pay, sometimes they're not necessarily pulling out their phone, and instead they're using like they're pulling out their watch, right? Mm -hmm. And they're turning on you know whatever that payment again. Apple Pay on the, on the Apple Watch or Samsung Pay or something like that on their respective watches. Does the React Native SDK support that? Like, can I use my watch and pay or is that like a completely different thing? It is it is a completely different thing, but we actually do support it in another um, piece of the SDK um, for Stripe's like issuing um, product. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do with the Stripe React Native SDK is um, like add cards to your native wallet. And that includes adding cards to your connected watch. Um, so you can add cards to there and then use it for payments like in person and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But you can't, um, these APIs aren't watch OS compatible. So you can't write a watch OS app that right. like you log into like, let's say, I don't know if Airbnb has a watch OS app, but you can't like go into Airbnb and use these APIs on your Apple Watch. Yep. Um, but I don't know if any apps really accept pay, like, because you wouldn't, you know, tap in your credit card number on your watch. That yeah, seems yeah, like yeah. a weird experience to me. So I think it's mostly for tap to pay, basically. Most of it's tap to pay. Okay, that makes sense. Well, why don't we head over to your screen and, and take a look at some of the demo? Like, I'd love to see how this stuff works. Yeah, yeah, we'd love to show you. I'm going to kind of walk through a little bit of the code we have without going into details, uh, just to give people some background that maybe haven't seen uh, the payment sheet video or, or other videos that we've had. Um, so basically, we've got our example right here using a couple hooks. Uh, I'll talk about those in a second. Um, and just want to walk through some of the constants. So we have an API URL. Um, in addition to running the app locally, we have a server running locally. Because with Stripe, when you're constructing something called a payment intent, uh, you want to do that on the server side just for security reasons. You don't want you know, malicious actors to be able to edit your code and say, oh, I'll pay a cent instead of $10. So we have a, a server running locally, and that's the API URL for that. We're importing uh, a couple of Stripe features over here. So we've got our Stripe provider. This is essentially a component you wrap your, your payment screen in. Um, and it's going to initialize Stripe and do a whole bunch of stuff in the background for you. Uh, and then we've got some of our platform pay APIs uh, and types. And I'll talk about those in a couple minutes as well. I think that's basically all the, the background um, that we need for the code here to make sure everything makes sense to everyone. So now uh, I want to talk a little bit about what's required for Apple Pay and Google Pay before you start coding uh, with Stripe. So. Stripe has docs on this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, on Apple Pay, it's or on iOS, it's a little bit more um, complicated, but still not that bad. 
So basically you just have to go into Apple's developer website and register for a new identifier, pull that uh, into your app as a string, super easy. Um, you'll create an Apple Pay certificate. Uh, Stripe actually walks you through this in the dashboard, so it's really simple. Um, and then you'll flip a switch in Xcode saying, you know, enable uh, Apple Pay in my app for this merchant ID. And I do want to mention that if you're using Expo and you don't um, normally open Xcode ever, um, that's fine. We have a plugin for that and it kind of automates that process for you. So you're all good there. Um, but yeah, that's basically all the setup you need for Apple Pay on iOS. And then when it comes to Google Pay, it's a lot easier. Uh, you'll just copy this XML tag and place it into your Android manifest uh, right here in the application tag. And as long as you rebuild your app, then you're good to go. Um, and that should be it in terms of uh, pre-work that we need to do kind of before we get into code. So uh, once we have all that, our apps are ready to go and we've created our payment intent on the server side, which um, that looks the same as it has for any other example. If you're accepting payments with Stripe, uh, with cards or with any payment method, really, um, your payment intent creation is going to look really similar. So I've just hopped over to the uh, server that we're running locally. We have our little endpoint, and here's where we're creating a payment intent and returning that client secret to identify that payment intent. Um, and you don't have to edit this at all. So as long as you have one for card payments, you're all set. Um, yeah, and so now we can kind of get into exactly what we're doing for both the Apple Pay and Google Pay uh, sides uh, on the client side. So we have our setup function that we're running uh, and the use effect hook. So what this is going to do is check if platform pay is supported. Um, obviously, there's devices that don't support platform pay or OSs that don't. Um, and then also, I want to mention that Android emulators do not support uh, Google Pay, although Apple simulators do support Apple Pay. So for this example, we're going to walk through mostly the Apple Pay side of things but it essentially functions the same on Android Pay. You'll just have to take my word for it. Um, so yeah, we're running through this in the setup. Is Platform Pay supported? If it's not, we'll bail out early. And then we're going to grab our payment intent from the server really quick. Uh, very simple, kind of like every other example we've ever had. And then we have uh, our Platform Pay button component. And this is comes straight from Stripe's React Native API. This renders either the Apple Pay button on iOS or the Google Pay button on Android. Um, and so we can take a look at what that looks like now. You can see right there, Apple Pay and Google Pay is not supported on uh, emulators, but we do have the Google Pay button there. Um, there are a couple ways you can customize this button. So you can change the text to say, you know, book with Apple Pay or top up, um, different things like that. It's all controlled through props here. So you'll do platform pay dot type, um, and then maybe we want to do add money. And so you'll see add money with Apple Pay, but let's just keep it at the default for now. Um, and then finally, the last part of the API is obviously going to be confirming the actual payment intent, which means making your, uh, your customer actually pay you. So for that, we're going to use this confirm platform pay payment uh, function. It accepts two arguments. Um, so one being the client secret, which is what we pulled from the server earlier, and then uh, configuration options. So right here, we're passing our Apple Pay configuration. Um, these are the required ones. There's a lot more options that you'll have. So you can require different, you know, shipping address fields or billing address fields. Um, but for right now, we're just going to kind of say what's in our cart and then our merchant country code and currency codes. Um, and yeah, we're, we're passing that whenever we click uh, the platform pay button. So let's go ahead and hit pay. You'll see, awesome, the Apple Pay sheet comes up. So something really interesting that happens uh, on, on iOS simulators, at least, is that it prompts with the pay with touch ID. Obviously, I can't do that, um, except through, I think, the simulator has a couple like programmatic options for it. But if you just tap any option in the Apple Pay menu, it'll come up with pay with passcode instead. We'll click that, automatically accepts the passcode, and we should see a done sign, and then there you go, success. So our payment intent was confirmed. We're all set. Our user paid. That's great. Um, and now I want to talk a little bit more about kind of the, the other options you have when it comes to both Apple Pay and Google Pay um, and kind of what you can do. So the platform pay button we went through, you can change the type to show different texts. You can change the styling. You can change the colors, things like that. And then on the confirm 
actually, there's a couple more options with the platform pay button component. So let's say you're a merchant that is kind of shipping to a lot of different locations. Um, and when your user kind of says they're in a certain state, you want to change your shipping methods or your shipping prices because maybe it's more expensive for you to ship there. Um, the platform pay button component has a whole bunch of callbacks that you can do, you know, on shipping contact selected. It'll send you, you know, this is the shipping contact that's been provided, like the billing address and the shipping address, things like that. And then you can update the Apple Pay sheet with, um, it's the update platform pay sheet method that's exposed through Stripe React Native as well. Uh, call that and set any, let's say you want an error, like, oh, we don't ship to this location, or you want to change your shipping methods that are offered or change the pricing. You can do all of that through here. It gets pretty, um, there's a whole bunch of options basically, so I don't want to go through all of them, but yeah, uh, I would visit the docs for that. And then uh, finally, the last thing I want to mention is in addition to confirming a payment intent with Apple Pay and Google Pay, you can also uh, confirm a setup intent if that's what you're looking to do, as well as create a payment method and then confirm that later on the server side um, if you'd like to do that. So it's all supported through Apple and Google Pay. Should be a very smooth experience, um, at least we hope. So if there's any questions, as usual, I would love for anyone to open like a GitHub issue or um, ask us, ask the DA team, things like that. But that is pretty much the API. Hopefully it's been helpful. Yeah, and as you're kind of like talking us through it, like I remember some of those past videos that we did together. And this actually doesn't seem like it's a lot of work at all to just enable these few payment methods. I think... For me looking at it, the thing I probably think about the most is like, how do I want to customize and style that button, right? Like kind of like you showed us, you know, you could write book with Apple Pay or top up or whatever the case is, right? And I'm sure there's other options there to like customize the look and feel of what that experience looks like. But other than that, in terms of like, you know, the flow of displaying the button, confirming on the server side, again, it feels very similar to like the workflow we do with, you know, using credit cards and some of those other payment methods we've had. And we've shown how people showing people how to do it before. Yeah, it's all, I mean, I think when you're using the APIs in their default, it's all really smooth, really easy. Even the customization options are smooth, but um, usually it's just easiest for us to go through the default options here. But a couple of the other examples of, you know, like customization options you have here, let's say we want like, I don't know, a round button. For instance, we can do a border radius of 20, make a nice little round button. If I save, you'll see now we've got a, a nice round Apple Pay button. Um, if we want to change the coloring of the Apple Pay button, we can also do that. Uh, so platform pay, button style, uh, automatic is the default. And so that will respond whether your app is in light mode or dark mode. But maybe we always want, you know, uh, a white button with black lettering and a black outline. Uh, we can save that, boom, change it there. And then, yeah, like I said, we can also change the text on the button, um, platform pay, uh, type, and let's say, for instance, we have a um, hotel reservation app or something like that, and we're booking a room or our customers are booking a room to change that to book and you have book with Apple Pay instead. Um, this just makes it clear to users exactly what they're doing, kind of better than saying pay. Um, especially if you have like some sort of donation app or something like that, you wouldn't want to say, you know, pay, you'd say donate. So that's another option. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of the configuration that you have with the platform pay button. And this is all both platforms, Android as well. It's just, unfortunately, the, the emulator doesn't support Google pay. Well, that's fine. But, you know, like you mentioned before, like if folks want to learn a little bit more about like the details of how these options work, we're sure they can head over to, you know, docs.stripe.com. And then, you know, they could learn about like all of the different options and details and, you know, options that they could set and stuff like that, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're really scratching the surface here. And uh, the whole goal of this API was to support a broad set of uh, use cases. I know the last uh, APIs that these APIs have actually deprecated in the Stripe React Native SDK uh, kind of didn't support all of everyone's use case. So a lot, one big one was server side uh, confirmation of payments. We didn't support that. And that's pretty huge. Um, yeah. but super happy that this now supports that and any other use case you might have. Cool. Well, Charlie, thank you again for coming on another time and, and sharing with us like some of the things that folks could do with our React Native SDKs. And for those of you that are watching, if this is your first time looking at one of the videos in our series, um, definitely make sure you check out some of the other videos that are inside of the playlist because we talk about like some of the other options and APIs that are available in the Stripe React Native SDK.
But again, thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.